Hi, welcome to video 5D. In this one, we're going to be finding the missing angle of a right triangle if we're talking about a non-special right triangle angle that we're using. Remember, in the last video, we found missing sides. This time, we're going to be finding missing angles, and it is possible to do that with using trig ratios. So, two reminders, just so you know. Um, Remember to be like before that when you are in your calculator doing any trig calculations, you want to make sure you're in degree mode. So a reminder of how to do that, you want to press the mode key and just use your arrow keys till you get to highlight the degree piece. Then also just a reminder about where those sine, cosine, and tangent buttons are. They're going to be right here on um, the middle of your calculator. So if you look at the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, we're actually going to be focusing this time on the um, inverse operations, which I'll talk to you about what the inverse operation means in a little bit. But whenever you are basically um, using the, the letters that are above the calculator key, you want to make sure that you're pressing the second function button. So just second first, that's the blue button that you see there and then um, you'll see everything that happens in blue above the key able to be put into your calculator. So, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about, um, first of all, an inverse function. So an inverse function, we already know what a function does, but an inverse function is basically one that undoes, if you will, I know that's not really a word, but bear with me, it's one that undoes the original function. So examples that you've been working with um, since Algebra 1, you just may not have known them as inverse functions, um, if you think about the square root and the square function, if I were to take the square root of a number and square it, we know that we would get x, whatever that number is under the radical. Or also if I were to do those um, functions in a reverse order and I would take the square root, if I took the square root of something squared, Either way, I'm going to get x. So like I said, inverse function is one that undoes the original function, and then example would be like the square and the square root. So basically, we're just trying to get x alone. It's whatever gets, gets x alone or undoes the function. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're going through our calculations today. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first example. And in example one, we're being asked this time to find a missing angle, and when we get our answer, we want to round it to the nearest tenth of a degree. So I'm going to place myself in this triangle here at the labeled angle, which is an unknown, but it's still the labeled place I want to start as far as thinking where my, my labels on my triangle go. And so my 12 is my adjacent to that starred angle, and my 15 is my hypotenuse. So if we think about Sokotoa, obviously adjacent and hypotenuse there is going to be this middle piece of Sokotoa. Some old horse caught another horse taking notes away. Caught part. So this is our cosine. So if I just set up the equation to begin with, it's going to be cosine of the angle as you know, but this time the angle is an unknown, so I'm going to leave that as x. And the ratio that I need there, cosine of x, is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, or 12 over 15. These are ratios that we've been writing from the beginning of our unit here, uh, but this time we're actually going to be solving for the actual degree measure of x. Okay. So in our next step, we need to think about how is it that I'm going to undo this cosine function? Well, that's where the inverse function comes in. So if I go ahead and I take a cosine inverse, and the way to do an inverse is like an exponent to the negative 1. So we'll do cosine inverse of this entire left-hand side here, which is cosine of x. 
And in algebra, whatever I do to one side, I've got to do to the other. So we're going to do cosine inverse over here of the right-hand side, which was the ratio 12 over 15. So again, this work allows me to basically undo the cosine function because, look, whenever I have an inverse and an original function, what's supposed to happen is that all of that will kind of cancel itself out, and it does. So I'm left with x equals cosine inverse of 12 over 15. And this is where on my calculator now, as I go to my calculator's cosine button right up here, remember we want to press the second function first here, second function button, and then cosine. And that will get me printed onto my calculator cosine inverse. And remember a, a uh, parenthesis pops open automatically. So you want to do 12 and then divide by 15, put in the ratio as a division problem. And then this is really super duper important. You guys want to make sure that you go ahead and put in that final parenthesis, because otherwise it's going to be asking, um, you're going to be asking the calculator to do something you don't want it to do. So when you do cosine inverse of the open parenthesis 12 slash 15 and then close the parenthesis, you're going to get an approximation. So anytime we have an approximation, notice I'm changing my equals straight sign to my squiggle equals approximate. And if I take the answer that it gives me and I round it to the nearest tenth, I should end up with 36.9 degrees. And then remember, as I think about putting that back into my picture here, if that's 36.9 degrees, then over here my angle C would be 53, ah, can't write that small, 53.1 degrees. And just to make sure, um, the side that I found there, um, 53.1 is across from 12, 36.9. If we did um, Pythagorean theorem and found what this should be over here, we would find that that would be 9, that side length, um, because I think you can see, again, it's based off of a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So just to make sure that you make that connection, the 36.9 degrees here is opposite the smaller of the two legs. The 53.1 is opposite the larger of the two legs. So that makes sense. So we can go ahead and we can say that our final answer is 36.9 degrees. Okay, let's do another one. We have example two that we want to find the missing angle. And again, we're gonna set ourselves at the labeled angle. So that's down here at Angle A is where I want to make reference to as far as my side labels go. 19, you guys, is my opposite. 22 is my adjacent. And so thinking about Sakatoa, this time we are at the O and the A. Toa part of my um, mnemonic device there, so I know I'm going to be starting by using tangent. And the tangent of an unknown angle this time is equal to the ratio that I do know to begin with, which is 19 over 22. Again, the question is, how do I get x off, off of this side? Um, a lot of people are tempted to just say divide by tangent. That is not tangent times x, remember, that's tangent of x. So we need to do the inverse tangent of that side as well as the other side. Tangent inverse of tangent of x is going to equal tangent inverse of that right hand side from before 19 over 22. The idea is tangent inverse and tangent are going to cancel each other right out to get the x alone. x is going to be exactly still equal to because I haven't touched my calculator yet as far as an approximation goes so we're still equal to the tangent inverse of 19 over 22. And when I go ahead and stick that into my calculator, don't forget that last parenthesis, we're going to get 40.8 degrees. Excellent. 
as we think about our last example for today. The last example that we need here is going to be um, a question that you're going to do on your own. So go ahead and uh, make sure that you label those sides like we did. Make sure your calculator is still in degree mode and that you are using whichever part of Sakatoa, the inverse trig uh, function there, that's going to get you your answer. And if we keep scrolling down here after you're done with that example, I just want to show you our I wonder question for today. And our I wonder question for today is the following. Can trigonometry be used in any other kinds of triangles? And I think you're going to find the answer is yes, it can. Um, but we're going to pause here as far as um, where we are at a point where we can have a quiz. And the first quiz, as you guys know, is just on right triangles and trigonometry. And after that, we're going to move on and talk about any kind of triangle and how we can still use um, trig functions to uh, find missing pieces. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.